call the meeting to order. It's 602. I imagine Brian's going to be a little late here. First on the agenda, are there any changes for additions? Yes, please. Um, we can uh, delete the stormwater master plan for tonight, and we're going to reschedule that. Okay. And then in, in conjunction with the uh, Memorial Housing Partnership grant hearing, they also have a resolution that will need to be signed with that. Um, so just add that to the agenda underneath that as well as part of that hearing. Signed resolution for the grant. That's for the parking? That's for the, the, the community development block grant. Okay. All right. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of January 6, 2020. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Make a motion to approve the 14th. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. I was not at this right. meeting. So that's just that's there. okay. Well, it just says I was there. On um, which one? Yeah. 14th. On the 14th one? Mm -hmm. Neither one. Well, you yeah. arrived later on that evening. Yeah. It says arrived at 445 p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. Just try to get my days messed up. Here. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So fast. Brian is on his way. <clears throat> Next, community concerns. We have some community concerns tonight. I wonder, well, I wonder to let the public know that we have brownies here to celebrate Christmas last day with us. So if you'd like to have some, and you feel free, please. Celebrating getting rid of me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was going to say, is it? <clears throat> All right, that's great. Thanks, Judy. Okay, next, uh, hearing for the Memorial Housing Partnership PCDP grant hearing. You want to open that up, Dan, or do you want to? I can start off with the general discussion just to explain. Um, the Memorial Housing Partnership is applying for a community development um, block grant through the state of Vermont, one of their funding sources um, for their, their proposed housing project. Uh, when it, Village Street, what's the name of Village Center Apartments. There you go, Village Center Apartments. Um, it's in, community level block grants are one of those weird things in the state of Vermont. It's federal money comes to the state of Vermont and then towns, in this particular case, I think we have to be the lead applicant or an applicant on it. Um, so that they can receive these monies. This is not the first time that we've done this. We did this with um, uh, the Arthur's project. Um, I did we do one with the Moyle Housing as well, or with the uh, the Moyle View? Um, so this is not the first time we've done it. They've changed it around. Tina's very happy here that right now they also there's less financial requirements in the past. Um, you can see these in our audit report where it shows up as in our audit as an outstanding loan. That's no longer the case. It's an outright grant now. So we're not carrying it as a deferred loan 30 years from now, um, which was one of those things that gratefully was changed at the state level. So it doesn't show up like that. It's a grant, not a loan now. It kind of it was one of those weird little quirks with the, the grant program. Um, and plus now you guys do a lot more of the financial accounting as far as filing their audit reports and everything along with that. Um, so it really limits the town's involvement from what it used to be. Um, I don't know if the money still passes through us. I know I still have to sign some things and stuff, submit some, some invoices, but it's not like it used to be. Um, tonight, they're required to have a public hearing. They've done the notices and everything in that in the newspaper to take any, for the select board to take any public input about this project and the use of um, Vermont community development block grant funds to fund this project. Did I say that all right? Did I miss anything? Wonderful. Yeah. So you're here to, to hear, you know, uh, any community concerns about using um, state of Vermont grant funds to pay for this project. If I remember correctly, in addition to the, the lessening of the financial needs from the town, that LHP, you are actually going to be the ones doing the accounting on this, the book work on this, correct? Yes. So somehow that money needs to get into the project. Right. And it needs to go in as a loan. Not anymore. That's a different. Well, oh, through from LHP. From LHP. So someone has to loan it to the project for tax credit. 
basis in the past they used to be the town would make the loan, so you got to carry it on your books. And now that's changed, so it'll be a pass through grant to the town, town HP, and then HP will do the loaning part and have to do all that. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And we can work with the state there if the town doesn't want it. Some towns do want to do the administrative work to keep track of the grant money, but we can um, come to an agreement with the town for Housing Vermont and LHP to do all of that work, and the, they've already got the form set up to do that. And I'll leave that to Tina and Dan to right. figure out. Yeah. And I don't know if we want to just show folks, I don't know if there are people here who haven't seen the project. You have some Yeah, here. I did bring what we have for the plans, if anybody cares to see them, if you're not familiar with it. Have any questions about it, and that's basically we're here to listen to any concerns that folks have. Yeah, I know there's some concerns here. Um, we, had, we we received an email about it. Tom, do you want to talk about that at all? Uh, yeah, I just kind of I, I don't know how the process works with getting waivers, and it seems like we're kind of getting things approved before the actual project gets approved. I don't know when you apply for a waiver, do you have to go up through all this process to get the waiver? Because to me, it sounds like the waiver was assumed to be done, and then they went ahead and planned everything, got the design. It seems like a lot of money's been spent already for something that a request a waiver has to get approved. It seems to me like it's jumping the gun here. And, and, and now we're asking for a block grant that for something that is not yet been approved. Am I looking at it wrong? Or? Um, yes, I, I think that you are in a certain degree, because but there's two things. I just want to make sure I understand both of you. I think you're talking about the parking waiver first. Let's talk about this project. The project like what stage itself. are we at in the project? Is it a done deal here, or is it still subject to approval? It's still subject to approval at the DRB level, plus I think you have to go through an Act 250 process as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, the of course, they've applied to the DRB for the, the local planning zoning permit, um, and they're going through the DRB process to do that. Um, so when they go through that, since they are located within 500 feet, of the municipal parking lot by the zoning bylaw, they're allowed to apply for a parking waiver. Okay. But it's not guaranteed, though. There, there's no actually, I mean, you know, we. I, 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 that's what I'm trying to right, find. Right, right. waiver, because when you say waiver, it's like an automatic thing. It's waivers aren't. Well, and quite frankly, I think in, in Tom in the past, they probably have been. So, um, and I'll use, for example, um, the MoCo, the cooperative. They have very limited on site parking. Um, for themselves, so they applied when they went in for their DRB permit. They got a waiver from the development review board to be able to use the um, municipal parking lot for their parking for that project. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any housing projects that are probably done. I would not, say that's not permanent. People don't live at Mobo. Um, I think there are apartments upstairs. Um, there's six of them, I think. Yeah, they so said there are apartments up there, so they so did get So how many spaces did they get approved to? They, I think that's, that's, that's a, so up until this point in time, quite frankly, I'm the one with Jim that came to the select board and said in this particular case, we need to hold off on the waiver because there is not enough winter, time, winter overnight parking in the municipal parking lot to be able to accommodate this project. So we came to the select board and said, you please give me us permission to go to the DRB and say, don't approve this waiver yet because there's there's not enough parking, especially winter overnight parking, to be able to accommodate this project without redesigning and reformatting the parking lot. So, and, and we've been working with the select board and the village crew, the highway crew, PD, fire, EMS, and all those crews, you know, to make sure that there's enough parking just like for MoCo to support the project so that they can go back to the DRB and have the DRB consider the waiver. So if the select board doesn't approve the waiver, the DRB approves the waiver. But by the same token, I, you know, I felt the responsibility to come to the select board and say, you know, hey, this, this project, if you do this, there, there's not enough parking available right now um, in the downtown to be able to support this project without doing something different than what we're doing. So you want to explain the, the parking address? Yeah, so this is, this is the, the reconfigured parking lot. Um, and really, it's taking the existing space that we have, reconfiguring it. We've had you know, a traffic engineer volunteer to come in and look at it with us. Um, we've worked with an engineer that um, Jim has hired 
Um, like I said, we ran through the PD, fire, um, the village crew so they can make sure that they can maintain it. Our current parking spaces right now, um, for the total parking lot, um, we have a total of 87. With this reconfiguration, and this includes taking out the, the planer and metal, um, moving some things around and really reutilizing the best space, and we take that parking up um, to a total of 118. And then the particular thing for the this project was the overnight winter parking, of which we had um, 25 overnight winter parking spots. According to just some rough studies that we looked at, you know, counting parking spaces, work with the PD and highway crew once again to figure out how many people were over there. We felt like we maybe had eight spaces that were available. And this is not our only overnight winter parking. We also have overnight winter parking um, at the library right now, too. I think you guys are, you know, they also have the Arthur's building, which is their parking lot as well. So we were able to increase, change things around once again, make it easy for the village crew to maintain it. And we were able to go from 25 overnight winter parking spots to 42 overnight winter parking spots by reconfiguring, repaving, and, and, and just making better use of the existing space. And once again, we work with everybody, Judy and Eric were on that, and we work with everybody to try to figure out the best way to utilize the space so that we come back to select board and select board agrees. They would enter into a, um, a memorandum of understanding with the Royal Housing to be able to per permit um, 16 winter overnight parking spots for this project. So, can I say everything right on that? I think so. Okay. Have you folks seen seen the, the email, the different issues that, that was brought up? Do you mind if we share this with them? The, Okay. Maybe Jim, maybe you can address some of those. I have it after you look over. Well, some of the concerns that I heard that Tom already mentioned, and I, hopefully we can put them, uh, bring some clarity to the mud, in, as far as process goes, is it's like a catch twenty two. In order for them to get funding, they need this approval process done. We couldn't do the we couldn't back the approving it without a redesign they can't go to the drb for the approval but they need all of this in order to go for their funding it was such a whirlpool of timelines that we were confused so i mean but isn't it pretty standard when you build an apartment that you provide parking for or is it standard in the center of town not standard. I don't think there's anything standard about this. I think this project is very unique. I think this project also was a boom for us because it brought to the forefront the downtown parking needs that we've all talked about. But we've never had that, that push to really address it. And so we've talked about redesigning that parking lot for probably three or four, well, four years that I've been on the board. But we this, this project brought it to the forefront. So. Yeah, I mean, in, in the perfect world, I would say if I'm going to build a, a building with 24 apartments in it, I'm going to look for a, a, a size lot big enough that I would be able to provide my own parking. And I think best case scenario, they would love to do that. Yeah, I mean, Unfortunately, wasn't this project a smaller size and that you didn't get the funding for it? Uh, no, I, I think that's still Mr. Schultz's concern. But I would be happy to talk to all of this if you want. Yeah, yeah. please. Can you say just one more thing? There are apartments around the area that rely upon the municipal parking lot now. So the ones up above the post office, the ones above Kaplan's, there's several apartments over there. The flower shop. Um, yeah, there's a, you said there, so there is. So that being said, you said we're going to create 114 more bathrooms more adding? Um, we're adding 17. We're adding 17 winter overnight. Winter overnight is the, the particular <clears throat> problem. And then we're adding a total of uh, 31 additional spaces. So on top of everybody else's allotment for parking, departments all around, yeah. Oco, we got additional how many parking spots? There will be a total of an additional 31 parking and spots. And of those 31, they're going to get how many for that? It's not, they yeah, think it's this number they get. They, they will have winter overnight parking. They have to get a permit. They, yeah. So we're not getting assigned parking. Everybody's parking. So if you live there, you're not going to get an assigned parking. No. 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 So for all the disabled people 
people that you yeah. mentioned that were going to be here. And, how did, and you only have one handicapped parking space on the site of this building that just doesn't really seem optimal. I mean, how does somebody with a mobility issue who doesn't have a parking space get home? So, actually, I, I, can, I can address that. I, I can address all of these things if you want. Yeah, go ahead. It'd be good for the benefit of everybody in the room. Sure. I know we've gone through a lot of it before, but that's hey, what the before hearing's for. Before you get into the details, just as someone who um, develops affordable housing all across the state of Vermont, um, it's, it's never optimal. There is no perfect site funding location. We're always um, working in a community and with a community to do the best we can to provide much needed housing. We're often working on parcels that a for-profit developer wouldn't develop because it's too complicated. Um, and this is a very good example of that, but it's a high priority of the state and of Housing Vermont and of the Millennial Housing Partnership to develop in our downtowns. And that's why we sort of put in the effort to try and make a project work on a site that isn't optimal. So I just yeah. put that other. That's often the case. We are. Yeah. I, I haven't yet uh, had an optimal site yet for uh, affordable housing. Though. And Jim, before you get into it, I, I asked this question at a couple meetings, few meetings ago. Uh, I believe there has been other similar arrangements with other municipalities. Yes, absolutely. Correct? Yep. We yeah have worked with other yep. housing. Vermont has worked with other municipalities to provide parking when it's a priority for that community to have housing in the downtown. That's okay. So I wanted to get the course. I want to address that part. before you go. Your organization turned down our building, the nephew building, where we have a level that goes onto a, a level parking lot that allows for a lot of handicapped accessibility that your current project doesn't have. We have a standing building. And for the amount of block grant that you're applying for, we could finish it and have it readily available. So the idea that working through all of this stuff because you have no other options in downtown Morrisville is false. And your organization turned us down for that very same funding. What was that, 10 years ago? No, this was two years ago. Two years ago. So it's, it's not that there are that this impossible project doesn't have options. Specific, not you, but specifically your organization touts affordability and it touts availability and it touts working with other groups. And here's that building just to house affordable, low-income, elderly, handicapped people and organizations like you Turn us down when the building's ready to go. We have a plan. We have the whole thing. We just don't have funding. And when we go for those block grants, we are turned down because they don't want to rent. They don't want to loan. They don't want to grant to people like us. And I just, I'm up to there with this attitude. Wait, unfortunately, we still have the same parking parking issue. Yeah. So I just need to make clear to respond to that that I've been here for eight years and I don't I've never been approached by the nephews with That's any bullshit. kind of a deal to to purchase the building. Um, we were asked to look at after leasing it, and the proposal was not really favorable. It didn't make sense for us economically, um, so we didn't do it. But that's that's all. We haven't been approached to buy the building or to put money into it. It just hasn't happened. So to get back to the matter at hand, I just want to explain that. Um, so when we we're, we we were always looking for ways places to develop, and this lot came available only because the zoning bylaws were changed to allow more density in this lot. And many communities are doing the same thing because they recognize that <coughs> having a better zoning, having more density in the downtown is good for the downtown community. Um, and 
I don't, so, I don't have an issue with the property. Like, I'm not trying to, I don't want to mm -hmm. make you feel okay. bad or anything. I just, it just, there's a lot about this that doesn't make good sense. Sure, well, let me go through and make sure. make more sense. So, the only reason we were able to look at it still was because it was within 500 feet of the municipal parking lot. So, we knew that we could at least have a process to see if we could get a parking waiver so we could have parking because obviously we couldn't get that much parking on the site. So, we decided we would, you know, we had some initial conversations and said, okay, well, maybe we have a path forward. We have to start several things at the same time. So we have to start this process. We have to start the funding process. We also have to have something to bring forward. So we have to start a process of what would a building look like, how much will it cost, how many units do we have, and how can we spread that cost over those units. All of that comes into play, and it evolves over time. So we have multiple things going on at the same time. It's not not like just going straight forward on one side of the highway. We've got all this stuff happening at once. So that's just putting that piece in, in perspective. But I think I can address quite a few of these other concerns as well. So first of all, I want to say that so we we base what we do on data. So we did a housing needs study, area-wide study, that um, explains to us anyway what what is needed in the community for housing. We also had did a specific market study just for this building, because we were required to do that as, as well. So the need is here, and it's, the need is for local local people, local people in the local area. We're not, um, we don't advertise in you know, Boston or New York trying to bring people here. We, this is a, a local thing that we do. There's a very low rate, vacancy rate in town, it's 1% or less, and there's a lack of available rental units, so local rents um, have risen sharply, making the need for affordable units even more critical at this point. I think I mentioned this before, but during the previous 12 months, we had uh, received about 400 applications for housing, for affordable housing, and fewer than 100 vacancies. So. For us, it's really um, that much more um, critical. Our senior subsidized units, like Lamoille View, at any given time have 70 to 100 people on the waiting list to get into those units. They're older people, retired on a fixed income, sometimes only $1,200 a month. And if they didn't have that, they would be, I don't know whether they homeless. So we, we, that's some of the stuff that we do. Um, so when we look at villages and downtowns, we have several goals that we're trying to meet. One is economic and community development. Um, we found that locating multifamily apartment buildings in downtowns and villages adds significantly to economic activity and foot traffic for local businesses. It helped keep downtowns vibrant and a lot. That's one of the things we do. If you look at Arthur's, we have 18 apartments and two commercial units there, adding to, to the downtown, to the economy. Um, in Hardwood, we've got four Main Street businesses that help keep that, keep that downtown going. And all around the state, you'll see the same, same kind of thing that we're doing. Secondly, resident affordability and quality of life is really important to us. So, if you're living out in the countryside and you have to drive to work, you've got to have a car and it's expensive. If you can live and work in the same place, you can keep your costs down, especially if you're, if you're low income, and not have to drive, not have to own a car. Um, think about how much it costs to own a car. Um, it's expensive. So on average, what we found in, in, in our buildings is that only about 50% of our residents actually have cars. They, they, they can't afford it. They certainly can't afford to have two cars in the family. They're lucky if they have one. Um, a lot of the problem that we find with people who become homeless is not because they, they don't have a job or they don't have a home. In many cases, it's because their car breaks down and they have to ch choose between fixing their car 
paying their rent, buying food, paying for childcare, and what happens is their car breaks down, they can't get to work, and they lose their job, and they end up on the street. And we see this time and again. So that's pretty important to us. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is that we really look at a long-term, a long-term thing. So we build buildings a little differently than some people do uh, in some ways. We're, we're striving for long-term affordability and sustainability for our buildings. So we build to a high quality standard, especially with regards to energy efficiency and um, items that lead us to low maintenance cost. When we build a building like this, we're, we're putting an elevator in for accessibility so people can get up and down and put some amenities into it. Building in a village in downtown like this allows us access to municipal water and sewer, um, fire access, so for safety reasons, um, so that at the higher density means that we can spread those costs over um, more units to keep our prison costs down and our long-term affordability in check. The fourth thing I want to talk about is preventing sprawl. Okay, um, we build in downtowns rather than building out on the countryside on somebody's farm. Um, it's not what Vermont wants. It's not what most Vermonters want. It doesn't help to cut down on our residents' cost. Um, I, I have people call me. You know, I've got this wonderful piece of land in North Park. Well, it's great, but. Who, who's going to rent it? They, they can't get there in some ways, okay? So that's why we, we look at it this way. And then um, the next thing is community partners. Um, so we work really hard to try and be good neighbors and good community partners. Um, we're trying to meet the housing needs of the community and in doing so work with the community and if it means that we can help solve the parking problem and be part of solving that issue, or another issue, then that's important to us to do. Um, we're in front of it if we can, and if we can do anything to help, certainly that's on, on my radar. So, we also, as Samantha mentioned, we have the expertise and experience to deal with a difficult site like this. Not everybody's gonna do this. That site has been vacant for almost 40 years, since the early 80s, when the house burned down, and it's just been sitting there growing, whatever that stuff is. Japanese is not Japanese not <laughs> Just been an eyesore in the downtown. There's no, there's no sidewalk on that street. Um, it's, it's a cut through. So we understand the lot is different, it's difficult, um, but we have a plan that we can put 24 units on that, on that site. It'll work really well. Besides the ADA unit that we have on site, there's two walkouts in the back that are easily accessible. So we understand that the two biggest issues, besides the construction piece, one is the parking issue, which Dan, I think, has really done a nice job of presenting. And the other is the accessibility piece that's been, that's been brought up. So we are always required to have some accessibility units in, in our buildings. In this case, you know, we looked at the site, and it's a difficult site for somebody with mobility issues to handle. Um, we're required to put one unit in. We also looked at what other properties we have in town, which are quite a few. How many current units that we have that are fully accessible, and how many we could make accessible if we need them. We talked to our property managers, we looked at our market studies, and we felt one unit on this site is appropriate. If we need more than that, we have other places that are way more um, suitable for somebody with mobility issues that we can we can put them in. That's interesting. It's not what you said at the DRB hearing, though. Well, all of these I, I was talking about. I think the question was how many accessible units we have, and I said we have one, and that. By, by we have to have the rest of them be adaptable. Do you have by accessible, you mean the actual physical apartment? You're not talking about accessible through parking. Yes, it's just, we, just it's a requirement of an ADA unit, which has 
that, you know, which is designed specifically for someone in a wheelchair to be able to occupy. Yeah, because you only have one handicapped parking spot. Right, so we are well, making sure unit. we have a parking spot that goes with that unit. I think that the, um, to sort of combine what Jim is talking about with the parking issue, again, many, many people don't have cars and receive um, transportation services and that's why the, the second spot on the site um, will be able to be used as overnight parking in the winter but during the day will be required to be left open and that's because a lot of people receive rides which would make the building will be fully accessible. The Hutchins Street itself isn't accessible. It's too too steep. So we you know we've looked at that, we talked with our funders about that as a, as a concern, and, and the group, you know, in general, we decided it, it wasn't ideal, again, <laughs> we often, we never found an ideal site, but there is such a housing need in this community that it still made sense to develop these units for folks that are able to live Yeah, there. I mean, it just does limit who can actually live there based on their ability to Access. <laughs> access it, get in and out of the building, and you know, getting up to the bus stop is, is a walk up a hill. And not just for mobility, but also people with breathing issues. I don't know, I, I guess when I was at the DRB here, and I was under the impression there were going to be a lot of people with you know, disabilities, people on disability who or were going to be living there. Have people with disabilities come visit, they'll be able to visit. It is visitable. Right, but it, it just seems like if, if you have 10 people that, that are handicapped that apply for to, to get into the apartment, you don't have to pick one. Or, right. I mean, think about have, like a young that, family with strollers. I, I understand about housing shortage, believe me, I know all about it, and it is true, it, and it's important. But just the practicality of where it's at, I just think, just, just the slope, just asking if you're, you're, most of your people are going to be older senior citizens, people mm -hmm. that have long, or so young families with kids yeah. and strollers and things that are going to just across the street yeah. to get to a parking spot. And, and now just hearing that you're going to get an apartment, but you're not going to have parking? Seems strange, but yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I hear your work? concerns, yeah. and believe me, we, would, we wouldn't build these units if we didn't think that there were eligible people to rent them, because in the end, we need people to pay rent to be able to and, operate and the building, right. and if we can't find people to pay the rent that can live there, slow, we you know, have to pay. Income, right? Yep, it's, it's up to 120%. And so is Arthur's the same way? No. Arthur's, Arthur's is not. It's, it's just all... No, I mean, Arthur's is up to 80% area of the income. Because I... Well, the well data, we do have some market rent units. Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. Okay. Because that's, that's right. It's a question like, so, how yeah, many kind of business people business. actually paying the market rate that they're going to be living there? I mean, it's, it's a guess. But really, how do you... How do you quantify that? You know, or is it... You say you have places for higher rent, but mm -hmm. is it doesn't mean you're going to get that. And I just think that practicality-wise, it just doesn't make any sense. You can have all these apartments that can be converted into accessibility, but you can't get to it. You can't get to the building. Well, what I was trying to say is we, we don't really need to. We have plenty of accessible units in our other buildings that we can get to. Separate but equal? But also families with young children. I know um, Becky Ganya was here from the Korean and Nichols Center meeting mm -hmm. at the DRB. I, don't, I wasn't at the meeting. She was at the saying that there's a need, like it would be great for their organization to have something like this in the community. I'm all for it, 100%. But again, you have young, probably single people with little kids in strollers and, you know, they don't have parking. And that's, that's equally a disadvantage as somebody who has a mobility issue or I don't know. To me, it just the parking issue is huge, and I appreciate all the work that went into finding the parking spaces. But is it really practical? I think people live again. It's this is made probably a really new kind of development for more so, but people live in other cities and towns and cities in Vermont and certainly in New England, where there is no no parking. I have you know friends and relatives who live in places where there is not parking available with their unit and people yeah, well, we don't live in that town. That's why they live in Vermont. Well that that's what I hear that that's what you're saying and I think it's that's why we're here is to hear that kind of <coughs> 
I also have a question about why there is no opportunity for street level commerce. The post office, you know, you have the post office, the apartments are upstairs. That's nice. Same thing with Arthur's, is this nice, like, attractive, attractive feature that, you know, all of us in the town can access and, and enjoy. Why did that get, why isn't that part of this project? Well, a lot for the same reason you were just talking about. If we had a commercial unit on that level where people could come up and walk into it. It's also very small, it's a, a small site. Um, there used a to be a video line. store there years ago, but... On that side, there was a video yeah. store? Yeah, yeah, there was. Doug knows. <laughs> you wouldn't need overnight market for, for, for business. You just pay the day market. Because if you have a car and you get an apartment there, where do you put your car? If you work at night or late, late shift, where do you put your car? Are you going to take up another spot in this town? Right. So why... It seems like we're doing a good deal there by making this this, this uh, parking lot project, but whatever we benefit out of it, we're, we're, we're kind of getting rid of it. Right. Because we're not, I don't know how to see build apartments and then have the person expect to park out on the street. Mm -hmm. I would pay for an apartment that if I could. Now I gotta walk down a hill to get to it? Right. It's amazing, time. there's a lot of people that don't need a car though. And that's it. Those are the people but that probably will. this is Vermont, you know, Everybody's right. had a car. They, Burlington, uh -huh. you know, they have to get to Burlington. Not everybody has a car. I'm not saying everybody has a car. I'm just saying to say people, say people don't have cars is not an answer. There are people in Arthur's world view who don't have cars. Yeah, right. They cannot afford a car or they cannot have a driver's license to, to drive a car. Right, so fine, but the I, people not, do. I don't know if you're listening to what Jim is saying. I don't understand what the big concerns are. It's like it feels very like conflicting information here and conflicting questions. That's why I'm here. Yeah, no, I mean, coming from you, that's what I'm hearing. So there's a need for affordable housing. Parking is not, it's not, it's like, it, it, parking is the there's issue. A need, there's a need for affordable housing. I'm working with, I agree, I I'm totally working with agree with that. I agree with that. Humanity. We cannot find property to build on. What we about the Yost have. property? What's up with the Yost? Is that oh, if you want to play $430,000, you can have that property. <laughs> so, I don't know. How much are we paying? <laughs> yeah, I just, anyway, it's just a question about parking. It just, to me, it, it, you look at the place and the accessibility, the practicality of it. I understand we need housing. I know. I'm on the planning commission. I know all about it. I couldn't agree more. But just getting to the building accessibility is like putting a building on a hillside and expecting people to. I don't know. I just and if they're going to be older senior citizens, older you know people can demographics. Help. It doesn't sound like they are older. They're saying that we're going to be disabled people who can't walk. Yeah. 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 You walk up the hills when you can't breathe and when your joints hurt. I have a friend who I'm going to. I want. I'm wanting to to talk a little bit here. I have a friend who approached Jim last at the last meeting and asked if I. He's on disability. He he was looking for affordable housing. He's already applied for for the more housing partnership. And he asked, is this building over here going to be available to me at 30% of my income? No, it isn't. So it's not really affordable to somebody who's on disability. So that is not really working. The fact that there are 400 applications in 100 units is an issue, which means that the 24 units that are over here are going to go to people who have no mobility issues, he, this same friend of mine goes up Hutchins Street to get to the bus stop. He says he has to stop several times because he runs out of breath. He's still actually pretty physically able. It's not that he has emphysema or anything. He's, he's got bad knees. He's got, um, he's got some issues with breathing. But he's already he also having, doesn't have a car. So. He doesn't have a car. He can't drive. Part of his disability was a stroke, and he can't figure out things at traffic signals and stuff, so he stopped driving. But the point is, is that it's not really affordable and it's not accessible. And I don't care about all of those issues. I really don't. I would love to see this project go in, go in here because we do need housing in this area. I also find it hypocritical that this town turned down a homeless shelter not too long ago. Guess what, those people, those people, are already here. We live. They live here in our community. They're they're out in their cars with little kids. They're sofa surfing, and we we want affordable housing. So yeah, let's get this done. 
but let's not forget all those other people that, that are mobility dis disabled, they are affordably, they're, they're economically disabled, these same people that can't afford to fix their car or pay their rent are already in our community. And these apartments really aren't affordable to a lot of those people. $1,000 a month for a family of two who are living on a $7.25 income is a lot of money if they have two or three kids on a two-bedroom apartment. Um, and then I want to—I have to take issue with you personally, Jim, for saying that we never approached you. If you want to say that you never sat in a meeting with my sister and, J and Jeremy Foster Bell and were approached about developing our building in partnership by taking a master lease, I'm going to call you a liar. No, I did say that I was offered a master lease and that it wasn't. It, it wasn't it doable work. for it, you. It because wasn't doable for us. Because that project at our building is going to be around a million dollars to finish, and whatever you're doing is a seven million dollar project, and our building isn't affordable. It's also got street level access for handicapped people in wheelchairs or any other mobility issues on two level on both levels. So it was really accessible and affordable, and it could have had probably 20 apartments in that building. And the same funding that you're asking for, we were turned down for, because we're those kind of people. So I'm not really, if, you're, if your project doesn't fly, I don't really care. I'd love to see the parking lot updated. It's long overdue, so I'm all for that. But don't give parking spaces away like they're candy on Halloween. You know, the 17 <coughs> spots that they need, 16 spots they need are, um, they belong to the whole town, not just to this one building. The only assurance that we're giving, the number 16 is coming out because that's what we're, at, we're, we're supporting in our MOU, is that the town would assure that we would support 16 overnight winter parking permits, not spaces. We're not assigning spaces to anyone. Right now, we currently have 25 overnight parking spaces. At any given time, there are eight available spaces right now eight available spaces during the winter parking ban time frame. We're looking, we're going to increase that by 17 more slots. And we're saying that we would give an assurance that there would be 16 permits issued to tenants of the building. So we're solving a lot of issues with the redesign of the parking lot, but it's not overstopping. We're, we are already talking about increasing the parking using the Oxbow and some of the land down on the Oxbow as well. We're identifying other spots and working to identify more spots within the village for parking. So it doesn't stop with this municipal parking lot redesign. And Chris, very wisely, when this first came in front of the board, said we need to separate the conversation. LHP is one conversation, redesign of the parking lot is another. Because the redesign of the parking lot is a community-based issue. LHP has a specific need. That parking lot with the redesign increases the total number of spaces in such a way that the impact of 16 permits during overnight winter parking only is, it, to me, is where we're already one above that with the redesign, and there's eight current vacancies as it is. I think that the, the design, the the plan that's that's here, and I and I firmly believe that not all 24 units there are going to have motor vehicles. I, I don't believe it for a minute. I think that if there is a gamble here, then I think the gamble is in the favor of the community to support the project and to support uh, the MOU that we're, we're here to discuss tonight. But uh, I don't see that this is the, the critical piece of this. I, I mean, Portland Street has a, a similar incline. Mm -hmm. To Hutchins Street. I would say Hutchins is probably a little steeper. Yeah. But Portland Street is still an incline. None of these places in our village are perfect for any kind of a housing complex. But I can tell you there's other means of transportation besides walking. Uh, the mobility scooters that are around town. Uh, there's all kinds of different means of, uh, of, of navigating our village. But we, we need the housing. Uh, and we all recognize that. I don't hear anybody saying they don't want housing. I think the, the concern has been the parking, and that's why I'm trying to address that specifically, is 
the, the redesign allows us to be able to go and support the project based on their need for a, a, a parking waiver. How about I, I just wanted to say one more thing to that. I can't. So when we develop parking, so we have we have a parking lot down there that's more than one year. But a condition of developing that project was that we couldn't assign parking spaces to our residents. So we have, a, in essence, a parking lot that we own, that we maintain. We have residents who live in that building. But theoretically, you could live there and come home some night and not have a parking place because somebody else from anywhere in town as parked in your parking space. So, you know, in a way I could say that's not fair either, but that's what we agreed to do to help with the parking issue in town at that time yeah, too. Yeah, my big concern is like, how are the people who need handicapped parking spaces who are low income and on disability going to be able to park and get to this well, building? Well, they're lucky they get to have a specific they get space. Person, but I mean, it, are any of the new spots that are in the municipal relined lot handicapped yes. for this building? Not specifically, but there are handicaps. So there's 100 and almost 120, so we have five handicapped parking spots in the parking lot by ADA standards. And how many are new since the re um, There was three that wasn't there, I think. I, mean, I, want, I want to say we added two handicapped parking spaces. So they took away one and put yeah. in two. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, we, well, this one really wasn't utilized too much as handicap parking down on this corner. And then we did put one up on this corner of Nephew Building. We put one closer. There's one already on this, and right now it's, they're done. On the corner of right. the yeah. And then there's two over by the post office, and there's um, one in behind Puffer Church. So there's one on the, um, by the post office, there's one on this corner up here, right behind the Nephew Building, and then there's two at the post office. Hey Dan? Yes. So one question I had when I was looking at that map is the bus stop is going to be over in the opposite corner of, the, of almost all of the handicapped spaces. Is there a possibility to fit one in there? Um, yeah, well, we've, what we've done, just like I said before, is we've, we were required to have some I understand handicap. The requirements. So, you know, so that's what we've, we put in here so that we meet the ADA requirement for handicap parking spots. But it doesn't mean we can't have more than the minimum requirement. I, I understand Dave's point. If we do have more, it's handicapped right. if you're in a, especially if you're in a, right. a, an ADA um, accessible van, mm -hmm. you need larger spaces. Right. So I'm just concerned that somebody with a wheelchair is the best location is behind our building to get to the bus stop. Right. But anybody else is going to be parked hundreds of feet away. Right. Um, and quite honestly, you know, have to right, their chair over there. Well, but right now, oh, you know, I don't think we have a handicapped parking spot down on that end at all right now. Yeah. Um, so I haven't heard any concerns from anybody mm -hmm. saying that they, there's nothing there for them to access that bus stop. All right. Is there a handicap issue in town that you know of, or people like coming in saying I can't find a place to park? And I, have a um, I, I haven't had. I mean, we have. There's some that the bank maintains. Um, there's more we still have some street side handicapped parking on the street here. Um, we're, we've got two that we're going to be putting in in front of the senior center come springtime once we can get the post in the ground. Um, <laughs> I mean, we planned that for a while after the repaving project, and we just, you know, the, with those yeah. crew just got yeah. backed up yeah. getting it down. Yeah, so um, I haven't heard any concerns from in, that we don't have enough handicapped parking spots. Is it, right. possible no, the get, the is it possible to get a bus stop that is, that's in front of their project? Um, we don't necessarily regulate where the bus stops. I mean, this is well, a shelter. But I'm saying we're all worried about accessibility to that project. And even walking up Hutchins seems like a bit much just to get the bus stop. I know the, the transportation, the world, the, they will schedule to stop and pick up somebody. I mean, oh. so they do schedule stops. They do that now. Mm -hmm. um, so I know they do that. Yes, many, um, but many people who have uh, mobility issues don't have vehicles, and all across Vermont, they can you can request a stop from the regional transportation agency, and they, they'll come right to the building to pick them up. Brian, go ahead, and then Ron. Ron, you've been waiting a long time, I know. Okay. Well, I had an issue, too, with us having 16 
parking lots that we were given away with a permit. Well, I was assured that we're not giving them away. They're gonna have a permit, but they don't get a parking place. If they get there first, they get it. Just like any other place on the other end. There's these guys <coughs> that I know that drive in, and if there's not one, they gotta find another one. We, I guess there's one, this parking lot at the library. Right. Overnight, right? Yes. So there's other parking if you know about it. I didn't even know about the one in the library. And then when he came in, I didn't even realize that Arthur's had ones we can use if we need them. So yeah, I think... <laughs> yeah. So, so anyways, I, I just want to know that they assured me that it, they're, they're going to have a permit only so that if they park there, they get in there, they can, they're covered because they... It's not going to be assigned. Right. They're not going to be assigned their name on it, like Dr. My understanding is there's no assigned parking anywhere in town. No. Right. No. It's been My only thought is uh, wondering if it couldn't have been designed with diagonal parking, because sometimes I think that's maybe reduced. Looked at. We, we did look at that, and actually that's where the traffic engineer came in. So we did have a traffic engineer review that and reviewed it both with the angle parking and the, uh, because my preference is the same as yours. Okay, I like angle parking better. I'm not afraid to say that because it's true, it's safer. Um, but you know, the engineer looked at it and said, you know, you have plenty of lane width. Those are 24 foot wide lanes. So you can compare it to the same lane lists that you would find at Hannaford or at Price Chopper. So there, there's no problem as far as, from his perspective, as a safety issue for it. Um, but and it did gain us quite a few more parking spots to go with the 90 degree parking. So, but you know, these are these are 24 foot wide travel lanes here. Um, so it did. It still you know enabled the, the fire department to have the radiuses they need for their equipment. So these are, are wide travel lanes, um, and it did by changing it. It did that. So if you think of going to any one of the shopping centers out there, it, it's the same configuration that they would have for the Poland parking. So. I see they changed the parking in back of Muscle Church to the which now is straight in. <laughs> yeah. It does gain us quite a few more spots to do that. So we yeah, took that It improves yeah. the traffic flow too, actually, the project. It yeah. will hopefully prevent right. people to cutting across. Right. Right. The, the is other there a spot reserved for the snow? Yes, actually, we work yeah. with the village crew, so in the winter, the, the, the outboard ones are the overnight parking, so the village crew can come in and push straight back. We're actually moving the uh, charging stations over here. Um, the electric charging station so that we'll be able to do that. So that they can push straight back and, and, and put the snow back here and it makes it easier for them to do this. There will be no overnight winter parking in the middle. But I mean just parking space in general. Until it's removed, yes. Tom. Yes, yeah. yeah. But it's like, you know, uh, it sounds to me like most of the people that rent these apartments won't even have a car. You know. Yeah, well, to. you want them to. I mean, eventually, if they get not necessarily. Know. Not necessarily. I mean, they may have never had a car. I mean, I'm with you. I'm the same mentality. I have eight cars. You know, so <laughs> I get it. But you know, a lot of people don't have cars. But they're more able to. I mean, they're more able to be able to to do better. You want them to have opportunities. Like, I mean, I feel like it's coming up. Right. I imagine when they apply for that building to live there, they're going to know. Well, yeah, they know. Yeah, they'll know that they you pick the right candidate for the right spot. I mean, yeah. they're going to know. I mean, we're worried about that. People take care of themselves. They're not going to rent a place they can't deal with. Yeah. But I mean, I it's a big to, thing. I have just one more thing. I'm sorry. You've taken a lot of time. But my question is about the rail trail. And did you say that there's on the back side of the building access? Two accesses? You can say? There are two apartments on the garden level. Yeah. Yeah, they would face the rail So They have their own access. And what about parking back there? Because that's a huge concern of mine. We're not There's looking no at parking yeah. back there at all. Yeah. So, and I think they don't connect to the rail trail. They face the location. They face the, the rail, rail trail. trail. And they'll have they can, they can they can walk access. out yeah. the yeah. 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 I, I think your, your point is, is acknowledged and valid. I think your concern is they could park down there and cut across walk in the back, whatever. I think as part of the ongoing parking discussion, uh, I think, you know, in the near future, uh, parking improvements seem to be made at the Oxbow. It's not ideal by any stretch of the 
currently. Um, so I think hopefully that will help address some of those rail trail mm -hmm. because that whole area down there is a mess anyway. Right, and you um, want that whole yes. is a big draw of the town. You want people to come here and enjoy the rail trail, and, you know. Agreed, and I'm not sure. I mean that at any given time you can't find parking there. So I think addressing. Yes. Uh, we've talked many times about developing a more master plan for the, the Oxbow Park that, in my perspective, absolutely should include uh, parking. Uh, I think you'll find with the facilities being built at the Oxbow, people are probably going to naturally navigate to park down there anyway versus where they're parking now by 10 Road. So. Mm -hmm. This project will not be taking up parking spot down by the Metro. All right, so any more comments? I've heard a lot. I just wanna, I wanna add just one other thing is that um, I think I applaud you for saying it's not ideal. Um, I, I think that's very evident in this project. Uh, and the other thing is I think uh, if they could or if we could collectively, we would have affordable housing for every single person um, to meet every possible situation. Uh, I think this is a step in the right direction, and I hope that Jim and your team continue to research other opportunities. So it's a move in the right direction. It's not perfect. Thank you. Thank you for your concerns. We we listen to them. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, that's why we're here. So thanks. Okay. All right, we'll move into liquor control. Um, there's the resolution. Oh, yeah, okay. Do I hear a motion? Where is the resolution? Do you have the, the copy of the resolution? <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought it was I here. I just flipped it all the way through. No, no, no. Here. Okay, have one. I have five. Thanks, Tom. I have five. Just, you know, we'll... Yeah, and if you want to move it to the end of, uh, later. No, we can do it now so that everybody... I thought we were doing it on this next one. It's, yeah. it's, That's the MOU. This is the resolution. It's for the grant application just to show the state. That the select board and, and I will obviously be the guy that, that that's coordinated everything on my end, so you could just pass those down. And if you're in support of the resolution, just for the, sign. For the, support of the resolution for this VCDP grant. Correct. That's yes. what we need to sign. Yes. Okay. Just, just Hanging on to your copy, copy. three to yours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a motion? I think so. that's yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. You need one of these signed? One of them yes, signed. please. I need one of those signed. Go ahead, Chris. Did, I, I feel a little weird filling out something that doesn't have anything in it. What, I know what we can do. It's Why don't we blank. do this? <laughs> um, I, will, I will fill it in, um, and then you guys are going to have to come in this week anyway to sign the okay. warning. I don't know. And then, or you can do it now. And I'm, I just, I'm signing a blank. Why don't we, why don't we fill it out and then give it back to me? And then <laughs> you, you guys are gonna have to come in later to sign the warning. And I can have you sign the resolution at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, liquor control. Make motion going with Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're in. Sarah. So um, there are six renewals. Uh, the state of Vermont has now um, changed it so the third class liquor licenses also come through the town to get approved and I have to process, but they're not paying the town any money to <laughs> do that that they used to do. Um, More so or less. RL Valley, Price Chopper, Black Diamond Premium Properties, which is Tomlinson Subway, um, and CBS. Jason or Garth, do you know about these at all, if there's any issues? Yeah, I look at them. We have no issues with any of those. Okay. The second class, meaning they're just selling? Yeah, they're selling um, beer or wine in a contain, uh, closed container that you consume off premises. What's the third class? Third class is spirits. Oh, okay. First class is um, beer and wine that you consume on premises. I make a motion to approve the renewals as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Do I hear a motion to come out? Make a motion to exit liquor control. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
back in the regular select board meeting. Thanks, Sarah. Next, old business, approve MOU with LHP Municipal Parking Lot. I make a motion to approve the MOU with LHP Municipal Parking Lot. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Um, who do you want to sign out? You want me to sign it or have Bob sign it or? Bob can do it. Okay, just so there's somebody on record to sign it yeah. because this has to go to the DRB tomorrow night. We can do it right now, right? Yep. <laughs> Does it make any difference as long as you get one? Either you authorize me or, or Bob signs it, one of the two. Let's do it right now. Yep. Another question, is this parking lot going to be ready when the people move into the new building? Yeah. Or, yeah. or is there going to be a delay between one and the other completion? Um, according to current, you know, the current construction schedule, it should be ready. The yeah, only yeah. outline is that the redesign and construction will be completed in 30 months. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, next. Good luck. The sale of Vermont peanut butter equipment. I see a, a picture in here. Oh, it's a cabinet. Yeah. I make a motion to uh, approve the sale of a cabinet in the amount of fifty dollars uh, from the Vermont peanut butter property. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, Conservation Commission, Article for Town Meeting. Is that you, Ron? All right, I heard you guys. <laughs> we always try to talk about you when you're not here. Do you know that? You've got to come to every meeting. <laughs> All right, only five minutes. Okay. Uh, I had a lot of questions that were brought up before me two weeks ago. And uh, so I wanted to say that as chairperson of the Conservation Commission, that, uh, it's sort of like a link between us and others in the state. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, we were approaching town meeting. One of the inquiries was uh, they've never gone before what people in the town to get funds. Now that was one town. Uh, another town of uh, monthly 2,000 people and uh, they, they have uh, every every year an on the benefit. And just to speed it up a little bit. The town of Lakeville has $200,000 and they're going ahead with uh, purchasing a big tract of land in the town of Lakeville. Um, <clears throat> we've been conducting educational projects over the last couple of years. We have a, uh, usually have the auditorium and this year we're planning something in April. And the speaker is, uh, I think her name is Morsh. Uh, she's going to talk about Cougars. And that's being set up uh, sometime in April. Uh, <clears throat> Brett Keon has been communicating with the Cambridge uh, people, and they're, they're having a fundraising project to raise money to uh, add 25 acres to the Crush Nature Preserve. I think we might be interested in coming before the board and maybe making a donation to help them and their car. Well, I'm going to attend a public meeting January 30th down there. I want to get more information, maybe a map of the area, and see um, if that's something that we can do. Uh, <clears throat> a week ago, Monday, I was a guest for Forest Park. Um, they invited me over there to talk about the American Chestnut Tree, which is one of my projects that I'm interested in, in doing since I'm involved in forestry, <laughs> at the Morristown course. Um, it was very worthwhile, there probably 35 minutes, and, <clears throat> and it seems to be an enthusiasm because the state of Vermont has thousands of acres of land that would be ideal to reincarnate the American chestnut tree. Today I got my publication that belonged to the American 
uh, Chestnut Foundation, very worthwhile. They even have recipes in the back for uh, roasted chestnuts. chestnuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the way back, I uh, stopped in at the Stoll Land Trust and uh, talked to them about a parcel of land in the town that I'd like them to maybe look at as a possibility of acquiring the uh, llama rights. And uh, I look at it another a parcel of land that could be become town instead of uh, town responsibility of another town force that's on the eastern side of uh, Norristown. Um, I've invited the Stowe Land Trust to come to the parcel of land that I have on Stankliff Road for their annual meeting, which will be in September. That was when it was held uh, in Stowe this past year. Um, I invite you all to come out. They have free pizza, and uh, you can buy uh, hard cider. <laughs> uh, my wife and I attended the uh, annual meeting of the American Chestnut Foundation. It was held at the Gettysburg National Battlefield in Pennsylvania. I came home with two chestnut sprouts that had been raised by the, the Pennsylvania group down there and I planted them out in uh, Stankliff Road there. So. One of my projects that I'm working on now, <clears throat> over the last few years, we've had a questionnaire that we've asked the voters to look at and it's been overwhelmingly uh, come back that there's a lot of interest in saving farms, habitats, and things like that. Uh, this questionnaire is going to be oriented towards <clears throat> seeing if, uh, if there's an interest to have subdivisions larger than two acre minimum. Because there's some areas that are hilly and they're more ideal for bigger lots and, than because of uh, runoff. So that's something that will be out for town meeting. I want to get an input from the town people. Now, relative to funding, <laughs> that's, that's what this all started out about. Uh, <clears throat> my group did vote to go ahead with, uh, with the, what I had proposed two weeks ago. So oh, I guess if you guys have sugared it up, then there's no need of arguing about it anymore. But <clears throat> I think there's a, a future for accumulating money that we can develop more uh, recreational areas of land. And, uh, and I think that's a big drawing card. The rail trail, um, has brought a lot of tourism and activity. Uh, one of my thoughts of use of money might be for um, uh, uh, maybe even a small donation to the rail trail people to continue the development of that trail, even if it's not in the Moab County, but the overall goal was from St. J to Swanton and I'll bring it back to the board which you guys approved. I mean look we'll listen to our testimony and you can decide but we're trying to think up our ideas of a good use for the monies. Yeah. yeah it sounds good. I know that we our big concern was we just want to have a specific plan of what, what we want to do with it. Yeah. Well plans have to be developed. Sometimes right. take time or when the opportunity arrives. Right. Well, I'd like to bring an idea to you that, that came to me after the meeting, but as we move forward with our gravel pit and the current operational area is reclaimed, you're talking about the American chestnut. I would encourage you because we already have a forester that's worked that land and knows it very, very well, Fran Sladek. Do you know Fran? Oh, yeah. 
yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I would encourage you to have a conversation with him about the viability of at least a portion of that reclaimed pit being designated to the American chestnut tree. Yeah. And I know that in the end, there's not to be a plan for closing the pit. Mm -hmm. I think it's going beyond my lifetime, though. <laughs> but well, no, 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 no. The, the current operational area is going to be reclaimed in the next two two years. Mm -hmm. That's where we're, we're currently getting gravel from is going to be bulldozed off and leveled off <laughs> and planted to, to grass. Because <laughs> oh. it's the least, least expensive way for us to reclaim it and hold the soils in place. But I'm saying that if you had a portion of that, you work with Fran, he might tell you the soils are good or bad for the chestnut tree. I'm not sure. That's why I'm encouraging you to talk to him. But if there's a plan you could put together. Thank you. We'll consider that. Yeah. Uh, that would be great. And as far as chestnut growth is concerned, very similar to where you see the beech trees in Maplewood. Okay. Well, it's we know it's each grow over there. Drainable soil. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. So thank you for the time that you spend. Obviously, yeah. very passionate yeah. about this, and I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. They, they do cost. I can buy shrubs, and a two foot high one is around five, dollars $10 each, I think. So there is the money there. I've been doing it out of my own pocket to buy uh, stuff for students. There are some trees here. Howard Monash has some trees up there that generate. Seeds, and I've planted a few this year and I'll see if they work. <laughs> Great. Thank you again. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Those are walnuts, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we'll move into new business. Skip number one. Number two, authorize town administrator to bid a tax sale. Um, the, the attorney that's handling the tax sale for Sarah has recommended to her that I be authorized to bid on it. Here's another, is there one property left? There's um, one left that hasn't. Um, which would be a minimum bid of just the taxes, and Sarah's what, just the taxes on that, do you know? Oh, uh, like 3500 Sarah says it'd make, it's on Union Street, and make a great parking lot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she I told me. I don't know the property. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> it's on Union, excuse me, it's on Union Street. That, that's what she told me. <laughs> So it's just enough for me in case it doesn't go for sale at tax sale, which we don't think will happen in this particular case. But that way, protected. If we're protected, so I would only make a minimum bid. I wouldn't go above the, the amount of taxes that were owed. But that way, the select board and the town's protected in that particular case. Do you want a motion for you that? A motion yes, that please. We uh, give uh, Dan authorization to bid at the tax sale for the property in the industry. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Approve the reallocation of funds. What's that, Dan? This was a, a discussion after from the last select board meeting where we had the funds that were left over from oh. the A Street, the B Street yeah. project that we would save for yeah. Main Street, and we want to put those specifically into a sidewalk fund so that combined with this year's budget. Um, we would have $100,000 that was designated for sidewalk construction. And that's, that's I a move. resolution here, isn't it? I'm sorry? Isn't that, is that a resolution? Is I move to reallocate Elmore Street curb funds to sidewalk reserve funds. Yes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Does that mean if it's just specifically designated for sidewalks, it can't be moved elsewhere in the park? No, it's no. just designated by the select board, okay. so you can do whatever you want with it. But okay. this, I think, with all the sidewalk discussion that everybody's had, said that you know if everything goes well it's next agreed. fiscal year, okay. that this money will be used for the construction of sidewalks. Okay. So. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Budget approved. Final fiscal year 2021 budget. <clears throat> so Gina went back through the budget um, and incorporated all the changes um, that the board had looked at and a few changes and things that she had found. And you'll see down at the bottom with everything that you've authorized to be in the budget this year, it's a 4.3% increase if approved by the voters, if everything is approved by the voters. What was last year? 3.3. Yeah, 3.4. Yeah, 3.5. Yeah. No. Do 
you have any idea what increase it was last year for 3.4? It was 2.2 two and, two and a half. Yeah. Under two and a half. About a percent. I'm sorry? It's yeah, like a percent it less. 2.2 like two and, two and a half. Yeah, yeah. like two and a half or something like that. that for I looked taxes. it up. It was okay. 2.4, 2.5. Right. On the municipal tax, not right. on the education tax. Right. Good to clarify that. Right. That one we already know is going on. Right. Yeah. yeah there's, we, that could change between now and whatever the legislature does before they get out of session. So yeah, we never know what they're going to do with the education taxes. Do I hear a motion regarding this, or do you want to kick the can around some more? I make a motion to approve the uh, budget with a 4.3% increase. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Good. Thank you guys for all your hard work. It's not easy. Ditto. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve warrants. Motion no. Approve warrants. Oh no, review town meeting warning. Sorry. I was trying to speed things along. <laughs> So this is this year's warning. Um, there's really nothing, there's no additional request for uh, nonprofit funding. Um, there was one point that Tina would like to bring up or has talked about, we've talked about it in the past, um, whether the select board would like to do away with article number five about um, select board pay for the voters to decide or, and just roll it into the budget. Did I say that right for you, Tina? Or? What I would like you to do delete Article 5 and put it into the regular operating budget of the general government yeah. because it's very confusing to voters. It is. Sarah deals with it all the time and, it is. and it's something I always have to take 7,500 out, put it back in, yeah. in and out all the time when I'm trying to reconcile stuff. It would just be so much easier for us if it was all included in the general fund budget. It doesn't make any difference tax-wise, right. but it just... It, it makes it easier for us. Right. I've thought about it. I wondered if we could do that. You, you can do it. There's nothing com it's completely legal. It's just like you could have Sarah's you know, right. salary separate. You're, you you can roll it right into the budget. Of course, if you people want. now are going to ask, where's that article? But if they, look in the, if they look in the budget, if they look in the town report, they'll see the line item that right. says right in there right. that it's select board salary. I like that idea. That's what the school has done, too. Yeah. Um, they voted, now that they have a new merge, they voted, they had the taxpayers vote the first time and set their rate, and now they're just putting that voted on rate in the budget. In the budget. If, oh, okay, you may have answered my question. Um, I was going to ask if this change would allow us to then decline a salary. That would be true. That would be, a, I'm not on the board anymore, but that'd be a welcome change if I were to remain on the board. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, you all, you all approve the general government budget anyway. <coughs> right. So you could say, I, I want you to amend this line to have zero. And just like you could say, but, I but once, so that's what Chris I've asking. tried to decline my salary. In, in, oh. in, in, but he cannot decline his salary because we're obligated to give him since the voters said that we had to. Right, because of Article 5. If it was in part, if it was in the general government budget, he could decline yes. the salary. Yes, he could. But it also keeps us from uh, having somebody raise it if we want, you know, if they want to do. But well, they would have to vote the whole budget down at town meeting right. and you'd have to, but yes. Since we're so highly paid as it is, you know, well, yeah. <laughs> for our time. I, I mean, like the idea. I'm in, I'm in favor of that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I have no idea. All right. All right, we'll delete that one. And um, no, because you're going to approve it with that deletion. Okay. What I do, what I'll do is I'll change it, and then you can't sign it until starting Thursday. And, I, and then you come in and sign it, and you won't find that there. That's my beer fund, Chris. I don't want that to go away. What's that? That's my beer fund. <laughs> Registration on one of your cards. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> True. So do we want to approve this? I'll make a motion we approve it with that <clears throat> deletion. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
If you find any typographical errors, because we keep finding them every year, we'll find one yeah, after it's We done. always find one after. So don't be afraid to look at it and say, oh, there's a mistake. Because every time we've looked at it this week, between Sarah, Tina, and myself, we've seen something else. So, and every year we find one. That's normal. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Now yeah. approve the warrant. If you could please come in starting Thursday to sign this. Yes. Make a motion to approve the warrants. I have a motion. Sorry. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. Yeah, so backwards I should have jumped in there before there. I did notice the expenditure for the repair of that truck was in this. Yeah. In this okay. form, so like, no. And, and Doug can talk to it, but I, from what Doug's telling me, it's working fine. Yeah, well, I've been told it's running better than ever before. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Dan, your report. I want to thank everybody, and you guys already kind of started for, for working on the budget. And this is something that Tina starts on in finance company or the finance department in, in September, putting stuff together. It's a very, very long process. We're not quite done yet. Eric is still working on the town report. Um, I think everybody's got every department that stuff in. I think so. So, um, but it's a very, very long process, both on staff, the select board, and I appreciate everybody because it, it takes a lot of patience to get through it. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for getting through it. So. Um, don't know if anybody caught the news last week, but the federal declaration has been signed for the president for the, the howling storm. So we have a meeting next week on that, 29th. Next, the 29th. So um, we start the, the process once again, getting through that. And um, Chris, thanks for being a member of the board. Appreciate it for me. And next meeting, February 3rd, I need you three down there to make sure you're here or we won't have a quorum. You'll be here? All right. Last, so I just wanted to. Where, next? Next meeting is February 3rd. Judy told me last right. week she wasn't going to be here. I think going to be here, but I will. So, um, so. I'll be here. And that's all I have. Great. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Dan. Hmm. Select board concerns. Judy. I don't have any, but I'll take the road crew for all the work they did keeping the roads clear this uh, week, past weekend. And I do appreciate all the work you all do in the office, <coughs> especially with the budget. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Chris. I thank you, thank it. everybody. It's been fun. I will uh, still be around. I do have one parting question. Uh, and I <laughs> asked Eric a bit about this. Uh, when we're putting gravel on the, I shouldn't say gravel, that's my, that's what I feel it is. When we're putting sand on at times, are, are there times where there are just very large pieces of? Sand, it's just, it's frozen material. Okay. Basically sand. But because of the temperatures, it's, and the, because of the material that's coming out of that pit. I don't know if you've noticed it's at the end of our road. Yeah. It's just in <coughs> what I perceive to be rocks, because I had a gigantic, you should see the chip in my windshield as a result, but um, it just seems like at the very end of lower Alma Mountain Road, it is gravel <laughs> that's there. Um, I'm not sure where it came from, but well, I didn't notice it yet. What are you saying? You can see in the sand pile, you can see. On occasion, you can see the clay pieces in there, and below freezing clay is a rock. So it's uh, it's full of moisture, but it, it, uh, it freezes up, hards up, and it comes out of the spreader. Very good. Do you think it came off a truck? Well, it's, it's the whole end of the lower mountain, the very T at the where Lower Elmore meets um, Washington. Washington, or not really. Well, it's actually that whole stretch right there yeah. is pretty plastered. <laughs> Um, this has been a while now since I've got that. It's been several, it's been a month maybe? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I wonder if that's when it rained and you had all the air it, you know, it melts. I don't know. It's, it is what it is. It's, it's water under the at this point. But. Brian. I have none except thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure. We'll miss you. I'll still be around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't. 
be afraid to come in and tell us. Yeah. <laughs> you can sit inside Buck Creek. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you and Buck Creek can gang up on us. Eric. I'll add my thanks and accolades to Chris for the perspective he brought to the board from the medical community. I found that uh, some of the topics we discussed, it was highly uh, educational for me, along with the fact that he manages such a large workforce. He also brought a lot of suggestions to the way we do conduct our business here at the town level that I thought were very beneficial to us. So thank you very much for all of that. Um, I would also like to throw a thank you out to our highway department. As is usual, the storm patterns are hitting on the weekends. Um, please assure our guys that we are very much aware of the impact it has on their families. And, uh, we really appreciate it. We're, there is a lot of appreciation in our community for it, but I see those guys out Saturdays, Sundays, late at night, hauling snow, and uh, it, it is very much appreciated. I leave my driveway and I can make it down the road without plowing snow. I'm uh, very thankful. So thanks to all you guys for what you do. And I'd like to thank Chris too. I think I did before, but yeah, I'm going to leave a hole in our board. Hopefully we can find a suitable replacement. The other thing I want to do is uh, thank uh, the rescue, EMS, fire, and police. I had the opportunity to talk to a woman that was involved in that 1050 yesterday. And she was very impressed in how professional all of our services were. And um, she said to thank Jason because it was, uh, it was unbelievable, the, the psychological first aid that, that he gave her, she said. And, um, and just the way everybody works down there. She was in, it was a pretty serious accident. Luckily she didn't have broken bones, but um, it was very serious. She described, you know, being cut out of the car and everything. And, and um, I chatted with her for a while, so she was pretty scared. But she said, you guys have the best services anywhere. She's from Maine. So, you know, it's really nice to hear. It's great, but thank you. So, that's all I have. Next, other business. Denny, you're pretty quiet back there. You're just coughing. You got something to say? Uh, I Ooh, which two? Yeah. Tom and Christy Snip. Ooh. Tom and Christy Snip. Okay. He was a trustee. I didn't know that this trusted. was the first meeting they heard of. Right. Tom is a village trustee. Yeah, he was on a planning commission. He was on a Christy's on a school board or was. Yes, she is. She also works at the, at the village water line. But just need to get caught up. That's right. Anything I else? I know you're all very excited to see that you have an audit to read. So yes. look at it cover to cover. Make sure you understand it all. I had a nice talk with, uh, with her. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It makes you understand more about it, you know? So, it's exciting reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I actually tried to understand it too. I understood a lot, but it took a long time. It's better than a sleeping pill, I can say that. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I should have allowed you That's to do that, totally Chris. Fine. I apologize. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So fast. Sorry, I was late.